Howdy folks, welcome to today's video. Today we're talking about investing and I'm talking the easiest, lowest barrier to entry way, least stressful way, and depending on who you listen to, maybe the most upside when you look at a really long uh, span of time. Before we get into all that, please do subscribe, drop a like and a comment, it means the world to me. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get into it. Everyone should be investing in some kind of way. They want their money to grow over time because there's gonna come a day where I, and you probably, don't wanna work anymore. I don't wanna work, well, maybe I do. I don't wanna have to work uh, until the day I die, right? I wanna be able to confidently say at some point, I can ring the bell and say, I've done all I need to do. I've done all the income getting I need to do and I can just live off my investments. So. I want us to set ourselves up for that starting today or maybe tomorrow or whatever day you're watching this. Um, so lowest barrier to entry way to invest, in my opinion, is through something called an index fund. And an index fund is something that tracks an index of stocks in the stock market. So we're not talking about real estate. We're definitely not talking about cryptocurrency and we're not talking about starting a business. Depending on who you ask, those are all great ways, maybe minus the cryptocurrency one, to make money. But we're just going to talk about the stock market because it's very low barrier to entry. You can just make an account on something like SoFi. I'll link it in the description and I'll put a little picture up on the screen. But SoFi stands for Social Finance. Great finance app. Love the company. Anyway, low barrier to entry. What we want to do is invest in an exchange traded fund that tracks an index. So a lot of words, but an exchange traded fund is uh, like, I like to think of it like a big basket of money. And this big basket of money gets invested into all these different companies by a big central company. So big central company holds a big basket of money. With that big basket of money, they go and they buy all these individual stocks. With an index fund ETF, they're just tracking an index. You might have heard of the S&P 500. You might have heard of the NASDAQ 100. So the S&P 500 tracks 500 of the U.S. stocks that have the biggest market cap and they have to meet a few like profitability metrics to get in there. And then NASDAQ 100 is a select specific 100 companies that are selected by the NASDAQ and they're traded. They're normally uh, kind of like higher tech names. So I'm going to compare three different ETFs index funds these would trade just like a stock on the stock market they have a little ticker symbol just like stocks on the stock market and the three of these are the s p 500 index which i'll just use a random example there's a bunch of them voo is the ticker symbol it tracks the s p 500 okay second one i want to talk about is total u.s stock market i'm going to pick a random one vti i'll, I'll put these on the screen and then the last one is uh, tracking the NASDAQ 100. And we'll use a random one, QQQ. Those are kind of like three big names in the ETF space that track those index funds. To keep it simple, I just want to use those three examples. So over time, the companies that are underlying, that are held within those ETFs are going to grow. And as those companies grow, since the company that holds the ETF that owns the ETF, bought those companies within it, as the stocks go up that are underlying that ETF, so does the uh, share price of the ETF, which means if you own that, you make money, right? So if I bought QQQ 10 years ago, I'm up almost 400%, which is a 5X. If I bought the uh, S&P 500, which would be VOO for our example, or if I bought the whole US stock market, which would be VTI in our example, then I'd be up, I think, oh, almost 200%, which is almost a 3X. So just in 10 years, if I put $10,000 in, I'd have $30,000 today in the S&P 500 and the uh, US total stock market, VOO and VTI. If I put it in QQQ, just because it's done better over that course of time, I'd have, what is it, almost $50,000. So that's mind-blowing money. And what did you have to do? Almost nothing. So I'm just going to try to give you a step-by-step -step plan. After opening a, a brokerage account where you can buy stocks, maybe like with SoFi, 
where you can do small amounts of money. They even let you invest like a single dollar, I think, in any stock. So it's like a really low barrier to entry. And you can do a recurring buy where you buy $500 every single month. So you put $500 in the account and it'll automatically buy $500 of whatever you want it to buy. Maybe it could be VOO and you buy that every single month, month in, month out. You don't have to stress whether VOO is up or VOO is down. It doesn't matter to you. You're just going to buy it because you know over time, historically, there's been a nice kind of uh, upward trend. Somewhere around like 8% a year, but really doesn't matter. Uh, 8% or 10% is the number I hear most often. Uh, so yeah, you can just buy that. Do it on a monthly basis, consistently, every single month. Something like VOO, QQQ, or VTI, right? Those are three different index funds. And I have three different examples. So if you started with $0 in every single one of these examples, and you put $200 a month in, and you did that every month for 30 years. So maybe you're 25 right now. You do this until you're 55. You still have a lot of life after 55. So this is not like crazy stuff only $200 a month. I know very young people that could do that right now, younger than 25, okay? So if I did that every single month, I would have $271,000 if that's all I did. That sounds great. Like the initial investment, $0, monthly $200, all you do is recurring buy. Technology can do this for you. I'm sure it's gonna be even crazier 30 years from now than it is today, but it's so easy. Like snap of a finger is easy, okay? If you were to bump that up $50 a month to $250, you'd have $339,000 after 30 years. Bump that up to $500 a month, you'd have almost $700,000 after 30 years. Bump that up to $1,000 a month, $1.35 million. And that's so easy. It's so easy to get $1.35 million, $1,000 a month. Get your income up, keep the expenses low, you can absolutely do $1,000 a month over time. Maybe not today, maybe not next month, but next year, two years from now, you could definitely get to a spot where you're able to invest $1,000 a month. And I don't wanna say it's risk-free, and I don't wanna say it's guaranteed, because it's not, but gosh, it's as close as you'll really get in terms of like actual growth over time and getting actual wealth numbers, you know, 1.35 million. That's, not, that's nothing to sneeze at, all right? So those are my examples. Uh, I'll link a little compound calculator down below. I'll link SoFi down below, which is a, not the only app. There's a lot of apps out there, but you can do a whole lot of things on the SoFi app. It's kind of like all-in-one finance app, but you can invest on there really small amounts and you could do recurring buys once a week, twice a week, uh, you know, once a week, twice a week, once every two weeks, once every month, whatever your paycheck schedule is. So yeah pretty much money for nothing if you ask me and i could talk more about these index funds if you want but i just wanted to give a nice overview here hope you enjoyed today's video hope you got some value and see you next time